Welcome everybody to Hainline Manufacturing. In this video, uh, we're going to be making a custom brake caliper bracket for a DT400. Um, as you, you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I posted tons of photos over this build. Uh, I'm helping a close friend build this bike, uh, making anything custom he needs, 3D printing some parts. Um, I finished this part a couple weeks ago, um, if not months ago now. I'm just now getting back to uh, doing videos. So had this video, um, just didn't edit it. Um, so I finished it up for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, biggest block of aluminum I've had in this mill yet, and I just went to town on it. Uh, there's thread mill and there's drilling, facing, um, tons of stuff, soft jaws. So I'm going to show you guys op one. I'll make a video for the soft jaws and then I'll make an op two video. Splitting them up into smaller videos just helps me. Um, so I can kind of space it out and not have to spend so long editing since I have a very busy life uh, just with trying to run stuff on the side and my job full time. Uh, and right now I'm working on a project that's coming up. Uh, I talked about it on my Instagram. So if you haven't, go over and check that out. It's Hainline Manufacturing. So this video, like I said, I'm just gonna make this custom bracket. Um, I'll show you guys the, uh, the program a little bit. I'll show you the tool paths. Um, I'm gonna try to start getting more into the CAD and CAM of the parts. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, I know I have a hard time with that, just trying to explain myself doing that. Um, so it's something I'm gonna work on. So hope you guys enjoy. Uh, and if you guys like it, leave some comments, share it. Um, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more videos that are to come. So hope you guys enjoy. So here we go. So I do have to say roughing this part out was beautiful. I just love watching this uh, and time lapse, it just going around. I did it in two passes, uh, two different heights, uh, just cause I didn't want to use a longer end mill and I just wanted to keep as much rigidity as I could. Um, so I'm just going to town on this, uh, just shred material off and it looks awesome. Uh, there was smoke everywhere in the garage. My uh, air evac system uh, only pulled so much of the smoke out. Um, so I ended up putting a fan on top of it and try to keep some of the smoke in it uh, so it could blow it out the window.
in all honesty, during this uh, drilling tool path, really wish I would have drilled them and then faced the part because um, a big thing I, you have to worry about is the chips will kind of whip around and will scratch the face of the part, uh, especially if it bird's nest on the drill like it is a little bit right now. Luckily, I did not have any uh, scratches, uh, maybe a few small ones, but I didn't really see them. That was something I really wish I would have done. I really wish I would have just faced it after I was done. Um, now here on the second step, or on the step, um, there's nothing I could have done. Maybe not finish the floor and the wall, uh, finish drilling it and then finished it. Um, but again, I did not have uh, any scratches or anything, so I was lucky this time. If I were to do them again, I would definitely change it uh, so I drill it and then finish everything just so I can avoid scratches. Here I'm just putting an edge break all around the part, um, a little bit bigger than an edge break. I consider an edge break uh, about five eight thousandths or smaller. Um, this one I'm putting about a ten thou uh, on it, so I would I would definitely call that a chamfer, uh, not an edge break. Um, so I'm just breaking the edge all across the part. Don't like sharp edges. Uh, if I can, I'll add radiuses anywhere I can, uh, corner rounder, chamfers, anything, uh, just to keep stuff not sharp. I also needed to chamfer the holes and especially the bottom holes since those are getting thread milled uh, here in this next toolpath. So here, if you noticed, uh, the thread mill only did one pass. I messed something up in the program. This is my first time really using a thread mill. Um, I did practice beforehand and I seem to get it, but I guess uh, when I was moving the tool path over, I must've changed something. Um, actually, it only doing that one pass brought it almost right to size. So luckily I stopped it and checked it uh, and it fit perfect. I love the fit of it. So I just ran the pass one time uh, and then I just ran it in the other hole. Um, as of now, I think I've got thread milling down. I've worked on it pretty hard. I uh, ran a couple different threads. Uh, I only have one or two thread mills and they're used. So uh, I just tried to be very cautious when I was trying to learn so I didn't break it.